Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. There are several passages in Book 7 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations that have to do with what we could feel instead of getting angry with other people when they screw up or even when they do things that maybe they intend to hurt us or that we feel are in some way offending us or damaging us or hurting us. And I think we should start with 26 where um, one way of translating it when people injure you, but a little bit more broadly and literally, when somebody screws up, when somebody does wrong, hamarte, right? So hamartia means everything from error and mistake to sin. When somebody sins against you, when they do something that they shouldn't do to you, then you can do certain things. And what Marcus is actually recommending to us is a course of thinking, a way of approaching these matters that will allow us ultimately to feel, we could translate it as pity, sympathy, compassion, uh, eleises. And this is actually in the future. So he's saying, if you do this, then you will in fact feel pity towards the, the person who's screwing up in place of what? In place of marveling or uh, here's another interesting translation, outrage rather than being outraged at them. And, and that's coming from the word to wonder, to be in awe, to, to be surprised by Thalmazain or getting angry with them, or gidzain, right? You will not get angry with them when that would be your natural tendency to be like, what the hell is going on here? That's the marveling. And then I better do something about this. That's the getting angry, right? So instead of that, you can look at the other person sympathetically. Now, the question is, how do you do that? What do you have to Tell yourself, ask yourself, remind yourself in order to do that. So he says, and the, the, the language here is really quite rich, ask and the thumu, put it into your heart, put it into your part of yourself that cares about things. Your, literally your thumos or the part that gets angry, right? Ask how these people get things wrong. How do they go astray? How do they screw up? in their assumptions, hupolabon. So uh, hupolepsis is the term that's used in a technical way in philosophy <clears throat> for making assumptions. And what are they making assumptions about? What they're doing and whether it is going to produce good things or bad things. So maybe they're assuming that they're doing harm to you and they're actually mistaken about that. If they are indeed not able to do harm to you, but they want to do it, right? And why the hell would they want to harm you? Because they've got screwed up assumptions. They don't understand what it is that we human beings are supposed to do, how we're supposed to be in relation to each other. They think it's a good thing to say, bully somebody else or you know, humiliate somebody else or interfere with them in some way. And you know, you could say to yourself, well, you poor bastard, right? And not in the sense of putting them down, but in the sense of feeling pity for them. You, you know, you remind yourself that they're doing what they're doing because that's what seems the right thing to do for them, right? And you should then think, he says, about your own assumptions. Are your assumptions, as he says, uh, are your assumptions the same 
as theirs or near them, your assumptions about good and evil. If that's the case, well, then you should actually excuse them, right? Because they actually, they're just doing the same thing that you're doing. And the word here is quite interesting. Sugignoskein, uh, uh, right? Which uh, we get the word sungnome from and sungnomes, which has a sense not just of excusing, but even forgiving, being willing to let things slide. So, you know, if they've got the same screwed up assumptions that we do, why are we actually complaining about that? Maybe we should spend more time fixing ourselves. But if they differ, if, if we've got our heads on straight and they don't, then we can... Now, the translation here is a little bit misleading. Um, they deserve your compassion if your sense of good and evil is different from theirs. Uh, it doesn't actually say compassion as such. Another way of translating this eumenes is be gracious to them, be, be decent to them. Treat them like human beings, even though they're messed up. Be peaceful with them is another way of saying it, uh, because they're, they're going astray. Paronti, right? Um, they are getting things, they're, they're literally looking at things in the wrong way. So, you know, if we practice this, there's a good chance for us to maybe not avoid anger every single time, but certainly feel less of it and maybe even transfer that anger, that energy into um, feeling compassion, feeling pity towards these other people. I, I think that uh, chapter 63 helps us see a wider extent to this as well. There's some additional you know, reflections that are along these lines. Every soul, he says, is cut off, steretai, right? Or, or deprived, um, has a lack. That's, that's the steresis is a privation or lack. So every soul that's lacking, um, you know, truth is doing so unwillingly, not by its own choice. Now you could say, well, it's a product of your own damn choices. You stupid person. You didn't read the books that you should have, or you chose to take an obstinate stand. Well, sure, sure. But on some level, it is still involuntary. Why did they choose to do that? And we go back to 26. They have wrong-headed conceptions of good and bad, right? They think it's good for them to not study or practice or anything like that. And so they wind up being cut off from truth and not just from truth, also from these virtues like justice or self-control, you know, sophrosune, which we can translate as temperance, <clears throat> and also from kindness, eumenea, right? And we see this same term, right? Eumenes, eumenea, uh, being kind, being gentle with other people. They're cut off from that unwillingly. And so he tells us, it, well, it tells himself, and then there, therefore us, it is absolutely necessary. Anankayotaton. You can't have any stronger uh, way of framing things than that to continually keep this in mind, to remind ourselves, to remember, to be mindful of. What, what do we need to be mindful of? The fact that people are cut off from truth and these other characteristics unwillingly. And then what will happen? Well, you'll be more patient or gentle. Prauteros, this is coming from the word praos, which is the opposite, you could say, of anger, right? Orge, thumos, all these other terms are being angry. Praos means not being angry, or at least in some respects, being angry at the right time for the right reason. The Stoics don't think that you should get angry with other people. So there isn't a right time. It just means being calm or patient or gentle. So you'll be, now notice this is not saying you will be completely that way. You'll be more that way. This is a, uh, a term that's, you know, you'll be more patient with, but with everybody, pantes, towards, towards the whole world, if you can remember that. There's one other passage that I think is really quite germane to this, uh, going back into it, where he says, um, 
what is uniquely human? What is the idion, the specific thing about human beings, is to feel a faction, philain in Greek, uh, for people even when they make mistakes, right? And now the word for making mistakes here uh, is quite interesting, ptainontas. It literally means uh, to like stumble, like you trip over something. And it, it can be extended into all sorts of other mistakes. So when people screw up, when they stumble and fall, well, still liking them, still treating them as human beings is part of what it means to be a human being. And how can we do that? Well, we can remind ourselves similar things. They act out of ignorance, not understanding things properly. They do so unwillingly. And there's some other considerations that he brings in here as well. Uh, some of them, they haven't really hurt you. They haven't diminished your ability to choose. They're not, they're not cutting you off from knowledge of what's good and bad or from doing what's right and avoiding what's wrong unless you let yourself get angry at them, right? So it's much better for you to be calm. It's much better for you to feel pity. It's much better for you to continue to feel and show affection to them, even when they're screw ups, even when they're screwing up seems to be negatively affecting you. You can remind yourself, well, in what really matters to me, they can't really damage me. They can't lead me astray. I can choose these better responses to them. And he actually has one other consideration here as well, which might strike you as a little bit morbid, but it actually is, is a great perspective changer. You'll both be dead before long. So you know, how important is the thing that you are upset about? Probably in the grand scheme of things, as we say, not that important. So you have the possibility if you make sure to keep these things in mind, how it is that people in fact do go astray, you have the possibility of choosing what sort of emotional comportment you are going to have. Are you going to allow yourself to get outraged and angry or are you going to remain calm, affectionate, and perhaps even feeling pity or sympathy with the other person. That is, Marcus thinks, up to us, and he is giving us uh, uh, some considerations that show us some really useful techniques for making sure that we wean ourselves away from that anger response and direct ourselves instead towards more distinctively human and rational behavior.